Alright. To, to starting. Everything seems to have started okay. And um, yeah. It's the maker's corner again. Probably going to do some naming changes on the way I put organize the videos, but I can I'll do that later. But anyway, this is going to be a session on um, Arduino UDP. And um, I actually got to work now. So, if we take a quick reminder look at this one. So now I've moved to, like in the last video, I showed that I've moved to using the Arduino Mega with the, um, yeah, it's the same network module. But, um, yeah, because I had the memory issues. Oh, that's all closed. So now I've been sort of playing around with trying to get it to work. And um, there are a few tricks to look into, so I thought I'd um, we could have a look at those together. Let's see, I'll just go back here. So, um, yeah. So, tip number one is that if we go up here and look that I'm using this. Um, so you have you have to use this ether cord. Um, so let's see. Here. Should have looked at this one before, huh? No, it has to be. Ah, this is what the naming is getting me so confused because, um. It has to be this one. Hmm? That would be Ethernet. But where is Ether Core then? Here. That scrolling didn't work very well in this library manager. I don't know if you noticed, but I, could, I, could, I didn't have so much to scroll, and now when I did the scrolling for the second time, now, now it's showing. I was wondering where the heck. So remember, if you're going to use the Ethernet module, not the shield, because the Ethernet shield with the SD card is a different electronics, so you need to actually use this. So that's very important to use the correct library. Um, and then also where you get can get tripped up is that when you say file examples, then it's very easy to just go like take Ethernet and then think, oh this is the you know obviously what I'm using. Now no, it isn't. <laughs> so you need to scroll down, at least in on my display. And then you need to take, you need to scroll down so you can actually see Ether card, and then you can actually pull up um, the examples. And I used um, what, which example that I use as the basis for what I'm being building is ODB client send only because the experiment box is just going to um, send the experiment data, measurement data to um, to the PC basically. So it's it's quite nice functionality. So if we have a look at the initialization logic, um, uh, 
so the, the, the like the code setup is inherited from the Ethernet shield. So basically, it uses pretty much the same uh, command setup. But again, one has to be careful when one's looking for examples on the internet that one is actually picking up the um, examples for this library and not for another library because there are some subtle differences and um, what was the one thing I found out? There was a bug in the UDP for the Ethernet shield and that's been reported, that's quite, that's, that was reported on 2018 so if you happen to be using the Ethernet shield then, then you have a problem with UDP probably already fixed in the ongoing software. But anyway, back to this. Um, so here you initialize, I mean these examples, how to initialize them, they're already an example, but I just thought I'd show it anyway. So you um, have the ether object and then you um, initialize it, you tell that it's, uh, in, in my case it's the um, chip select is on pin 10. Yes, this buffer I need to show. Oh, I have to scroll all the way back to the beginning again, because this is important here. Um, when you define the buffer, make sure you do make it 700. There's lots of different variants on the internet, but um, most of the core examples there are 700 bytes. And I mean, if you're going to run this on Arduino Uno, then you can think that, oh, goodbye memory. But if one wants reliable, like, ping functionality, loopback functionality, unreliable UDB, then uh, don't have anything less than 700 in my experience. Okay, so, and then you can see here Ethernet chip select is now set to 10 in my own code. And, um, so okay, you, you set it up and you assign a Mac. Yeah, you, had, you saw the Mac string up there, so you can give it a unique ID on a Mac address on the network. Yeah, but this is cool. You see, it, it can, it does support DHCP, so it can pick up the, uh, not only the IP configuration, but the default gateway and the DNS setup directly from the network, which is really nice. And um, then it stores the, it's the IP that it got into an internal variable, so you can just print it out. So I have it printing out the experiment box ID. And um, if you want to communicate with another uh, another machine, then um, you can basically. Uh, I have to scroll all the way up here again. I'm so sorry about the scrolling. Um, where did I put it? Website. Ah, whatever. This is just. I mean, there's a there's a string set up in program memory and program manager means that it puts this as a constant string in the program memory and not in the RAM. When it, but that's academic. Mm. You can actually use the F micro to do the same thing. Um, but anyway here what I said is that okay I, I arbitrarily named it. Uh, I kept the same name that was in the example. So I gave my um, the name of my desktop so using still Windows 10 default, I haven't changed it. Um, but then it means when you use the machine name, you don't need to use the IP address. And the great thing is in this um, module library that um, it can do a uh, it can do a DNS lookup on the name. So basically, you know, you 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 yeah, you can use the 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 names you've given the devices on the network and not the IP address, which is good because if you have DHCP, then the IP address will change all the time. So every time this iterates, I mean, you could make it um, update the DNS lookup every time it iterates, so that if you have you know, computers switching on and off and they get new new IP address, potentially get new IP address, then it can pick up a new one. And then I just, um, it also has a utility function for um, printing out and formatting the um, IP address. So, and then it has an internal variable to be able to install the, um, yeah, the destination machine. So that's basically the setup. So I'm very happy about it. It has some, 
DHCP uh, functionality and then it can resolve addresses. So that makes life a lot easier. Um, oh, I think I already showed this in this but this is to get the ping work, then you need this loopback line here in the main loop. So what I can do is that I can um, actually ping the, the experiment box. But that I showed already previously. And now I put in this transfer, um, transmit experiment measurements. I put the section that. Uh, so first it does prints it to the serial port over USB basically, and then it um, creates the file on the SD card, and then I have a selection, for a section for sending the data on the uh, Ethernet UDP. And um, it's um, basically sending it as a uh, binary data stream. I wonder what would be the best way to show this. If I demonstrate it first and then just make a few comments about the code, uh, I think that would be probably the best. So if we... Okay, the experiment's already running. That's good. So then we can just take... So what I did is I borrowed an example of uh, reading UDP packages off the off the network incoming packages on this on the specific UDP port, and uh, it just looks like this. So it it re every time it um, has been sending the UDP packets, it picks them up and um, send uh, yeah, and basically it prints out the received message and every individual data items on its own line. And uh, I copy pasted this and cleaned it up just to make sure that it's picking up the correct structure in here. Yeah, the structure looks okay and all the, all the values are as intended. Now then, let's see. So, back to the code. Um, Anything to mention here? Yeah, if you use send UDP to send constant strings, then um, you basically don't have much of a problem. You just put the uh, you you put the constant string here, and then you say size off constant string, and then it's the source port, the destination port, uh, destination IP address, and then the destination port. So it's not no big deal. But then you get into problems that if you want to build a concatenated string and then you want to send it. You can't put this form in here directly as a parameter because it doesn't know how to do the um, data type conversion. So there are of course other ways to do this but what I did is I said okay we have um, I, I defined a string A and then A becomes the concatenated string and then in the parameter here I use the uh, C string function to um, convert the string into a, a null delimited character string and, um, and then also one has to change here when one is using, you can't use size, size off you need to use the length, report the actual length of the string, and then you need to add one to incorporate the null termination. Yep, so that's the trick for sending concatenated strings. And um, then it was to, I needed to send some long data, so then I used the, you can't put that here as a parameter either. There's no there's no overloads on this send UDP, so you you know the the buffer has to be a a um, yeah an, an array of um, basically char characters. Um, uh, so in this case I used S print F to um, print the uh, long integer value using a designated format into a buffer string and then I use the buffer string and, and I've just added it to the send UDB command. 
and then I wanted to convert double values, so then I use this function here uh, to uh, take this uh, float value, total maximum length six, um, number of numbers off the decimal two, and then stick it into a buffer. And then again, um, just print out, you know, assign the buffer to the send UVP statement. Yeah, so those are the the use cases that I have to resolve or solve or figure out by looking at different examples and testing myself. Ah, uh, there's still quite a war going on online where um, basically the Arduino C++ is in the core libraries and core concept they want to move to using string and not um, uh, null terminated um, C type strings and um, the problem with this is that then those that are in favor of uh, the string object type then they will implement these on the interfaces of their libraries and um, those that are at war um, to prevent the use of any object orientated um, objects because they think they waste memory and other reasons, then um, they uh, will stick with the um, character arrays. And, I mean, both worlds could very easily live together. I mean, you can you can build a library with a string object to find in the interface. It doesn't really grow the library. I mean, it's just a, an interface with a simple internal conversion to an internal C string, so it doesn't mean you need to rewrite the whole library. Uh, it would make it easier for us, like more normal people, to be able to handle this. Because I think the majority of people using Arduino, the biggest problems they have is that they take examples off the internet and then they run it in the latest incarnation of the Arduino environment and then they get these type conversion warnings and errors. And if you're not an experienced programmer, they, they, they don't mean anything to you intuitively, especially if you come from some other programming, simpler programming language or even very forgiving programming languages like Python. But anyway, uh, that was, I think, everything I had to say about the UDP. Um, as I said, moving to the Arduino Mega was absolutely necessary to get this part running um, uh, well. And um, I don't know if I'll actually use this functionality because I actually have the values coming across the uh, emulated serial port. But n now I have, I have actually having the value, I have the values popping into the computer here, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a piece of code that receives the values, so I could incorporate this into the Python client for the uh, measurement experiment if I wanted to. Uh, I'll think about it a bit. Ah, leave a comment if somebody wants to see this integrated into the, into the main logic. But, um, but I mean, basically on this example, if on, um, they're very cheap, these modules, and the good thing is that as they are not shields, you can actually bolt them onto, um, onto the side of the project without taking a whole, yeah, reserving a whole space. I don't know if there is an Ethernet shield for the Arduino Mega directly that can directly be used. I'm not, I'm not sure about that because you get this problem where the SBI default SBI um, function pins have been moved to, to another location, which I made a video an earlier video about. Anyway, so that was all about um, UDP. So, yeah. Now, do the usual thing, check the audio, and if it's okay, then I'll upload it. Yep, see everybody later.